shout out morning i'm trying to bring on a special guest that's why i'm messing with the phone and messing with the the service i'm trying to bring on a special guest he should already be on but if anybody on on, on know how to get uh supreme grandmaster richard osborne to to come on uh, we're trying to figure out how to bring him on this uh i'm used to a different setting i don't know how to bring you on facebook I know I've done it before, but you know, you know, we, we I'm, I'm trying. So, if anybody know how to tell him to, anybody know how to tell him to press invite, send it, or whatever, 
hey, listen, that's what I need. That's what I need. So uh, <laughs> if y'all know how to have him to uh, come on on the show, we trying to bring uh, Supreme Grandmaster Richard Osborne for the MMASC. Uh, we're trying to bring him in on the show. I'm trying to figure out how to do it. I've been messing with it, and it's just not working for me. Usually, I can bring you on real on my other uh, part. Let me. I'm gonna check something because it's gonna be good, y'all. It's gonna be good now. It's gonna be good. I, I, I'm trying to bring him in. I see him. I see him. I see him. But uh, I, I don't. He said he's here, but I'm trying to bring him on the show. I need him on the show. So y'all, give me just a second. I'm, I'm messing with it. I think he having difficulties on that end, and I was too. So I want to make sure that I, I'm sending it again. Send room. It should be there. So we're going to try to get him on this show, and because uh, we're going to talk about the the. Um, see, he said he's here, but I want to I want to see his smiley face on here. I want to see the smiley faces on there. So I can get your comments and everything but i'm trying to bring you i'm trying to bring you on the show so everybody can see you, you know, they can see your text messaging and everything but i want them to see your face so listen 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 this morning we have with us uh, i don't know if y'all can see him uh, but y'all can see his uh, uh thing he said he's on here uh we we have been doing so much and i i need to you know be in one of uh, MMASC Black Belts and one of the promoters for the MMASC. Uh, we need to let you know what's going on in the city and what we're doing and what Black Belts are doing and what we're all doing. Uh, can you send me an invite or a wave or something, uh, Grandmaster? Then it, maybe I can bring you on like that. I think if you send a wave or something, I can still bring you on the show or you tell me, you know, if you send a, it, it's some way on there. I know we just, we both trying to figure it out, but you know, if you just send me a, I think if you send me a, a wave or show me that you're watching the show, I, I got my phone. So it do let me show, uh, see if you are waving or trying to get on or whatever. I'm gonna figure it out before it's over with, because it's real important what we're trying to do. And and until I get him on, I just wanna uh, first thank God for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way, thanking him for all the blessings that he have bestowed upon us. And this morning I had a couple more interviews that set up and boy, we gonna be on fire this morning. They're actually coming in the studio now, now the reason that you see the studio, and that's what I love about here, uh, having my studio, I can set it up the way that I want to. And this morning, uh, since we were going to be talking about the MMASC and, and, and martial arts, I went ahead and put some of the trophies up. And the reason some of the trophies are up is for that simple reason is that uh, you know, when you go to tournaments and stuff, and and you want to, uh, you you want to you want to be the best, and you want to you want to win the best. And what you're looking at right here is uh, some of the best that the some of the best that the MMASC had to offer. These are what we call the triple crown trophies. This is when you fight your butt off all year. This is what you fight for for the end of the year. I believe about three people out of the 200 or whatever. This is this is <laughs> this is what you get right there. As a as the, the this is the top this is the top fighters that will receive this uh, these awards. So this is what um, this is what we fight for every year. We every year, but listen, it's not easy. I think I won three of them, but it is not easy. Don't let anybody lie to you and say, oh, that was easy. Oh, that was easy because you end up fighting three, four different categories that you that you shouldn't be in. And, but you got to be, it ain't just fighting. You got to be number one in all those categories 
to be able to win these awards. And when you do it two and three times a year in a row, yeah, yeah, you you are putting the work in. But see, we talk about putting the work in in the in the ring and everything. But what about outside of the ring? Outside of the ring, what are we doing as black belts outside of the ring? I'll tell you, I can't speak. I can't speak everything for MMASC and and Missouri and Arkansas and and Oklahoma and all the ones that's apart. But I can speak what uh, Williams Elite Martial Art is doing uh, as being part of the MMASC. So MMASC, I know they are feeding the homeless uh, every other month, if not every month, with truckloads, truckloads of food. They load the tractor trailers up. They load the tractor trailers up and, and, and have them at a certain destination. And the people come and I know that they have given out well over, well over, this is not exaggeration. They have given out well over a uh, 100,000 plus pounds of food. We already know that that's, that's blown away probably closer to now three or 400,000. Uh, that's what, that's, that's what you see us wearing the black belts. It said, it said TCOB taking care of business and that's what we do and what's precious to me is uh i always push the black belts i always said that we should be in the community yeah we got a black belt on we earned it and all that but what are you doing in the community what are you doing to help somebody else and that's what this is supposed to be all about helping others bringing others in and and you know doing the work being an example in the city and in the community at home you know, uh, so when we go out and and make friends in the community, it makes them, it inspires them to want to come and uh, be a part of what you're a part of. Another thing that we under, understand that MMASC is probably one of the only, one of the only, it's not the only, but it's one of the only that still have active fighters that's over 50 years old, Af active competitors. I was talking to somebody the other day, or a couple last night, matter of fact, and I said, hey, uh, um, people my age, uh, you know, I'm double nickel. I asked them, I said, uh, uh, is there anybody still competing in you guys thing that's my age? They said, no, they don't, they don't compete no more. And we don't have those in your age. And See, but when you go to the MMASC located over in Springfield, Missouri, Supreme Grandmaster Richard Osborne, he he he's probably 906 himself, and he's still competing. So why not? <laughs> I know he's gonna get me for that, but you know what I'm saying. We're still we're still older, over 50, and we're still competing. Uh, I haven't been able to compete this year because of the all the other things that we're doing and you know the magazines the filming and all that and this year i just had to scale it down and which is which is bad for me because i've been with mmasc for seven years and this will probably be the first year that i don't uh that i wasn't competing for the triple crown or the uh you know the points champion and all that this is the first year out of all the years, and and it feels strange. It doesn't feel it doesn't feel right for me to 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 uh, not be competing. So I'm I'm having a problem with that. <laughs> but I I just say that to say this that you know it's it's a uh, it's a great thing to be able to still uh, be competing. Uh, my question is, let me see. I think he might be. I think he might be in. Let me let me let me check. I heard a beep. Let's see. Oh, there we go. There we go. There Hello, we go. Man. See? Yeah. You hear me now? Yeah. You hear me now? You just figured it out. Yeah. He, he, he finally figured it out, y'all. Let me let me let me slide over here. Let me he done figured it out. Let man, he done he done figured it out. Let me let me let me slide my <laughs> let me let me change the background. Let me see if I can get in here with him. 
I want to see if I can get in here with him on this background uh, that I just set in here. Let me see. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's much better. Can you hear me, sir? Can you hear loud me? And loud and clear. Oh, okay, okay. So y'all see, this is Supreme Grand Master Richard Osborne. I was just explaining to him we were trying to get you in because you know, you know, some people have a little difficult with the with the with the computer savvy stuff. So I said I was gonna get you in, and somebody said you was nine hundred and six years old. You know, they was making fun of you before you got on, but I took care of you though. I fixed it up for you. I want you to know I fixed it up for you. But we All are right, so dude. glad. <laughs> we are so glad to have you. This is the second time you're on my show. Um, uh, because we did this in Vegas. When we were in Vegas, we were able to do it. But, you know, we don't have technical difficulties this morning because when we're in studio, we can see you, you can see us, everybody can see us. So let me just make sure it's live for everybody. Let me, that's one thing I got to do is make sure it's live for everybody. Uh, let me see. Uh, yep, we are live. We are live, so that that's good. I wanted to make sure that it was good and live for everybody. So, everybody, once again, let me get this the show in here. Uh, let me take this away. Just give me a second. I'm 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 making some stuff happen. Boom, boom, boom. The banners. So everybody will be able to see. There we go. There we go. That's what I was looking to do. And there. There we go. There we go. There we go. So now everybody see that it's us on. And I didn't put that E on there. I don't know why how that E got on there, but you know, that's minor stuff. We'll take care of that. But I've been talking for the last couple of minutes, but go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. And, and then I'll come back on. I already, I'll go back over again and explain to them how we win all these pretty uh, triple crown trophies and all we don't have an agenda. We just kind of sit here and talk a few minutes about uh, how we're changing lives one kick at a time. So it's on you, sir. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, Supreme Grandmaster Richard Osborne here out of Springfield, Missouri. Uh, like Master Williams was was talking about, the MMASC is, is rocking and rolling here in the Midwest. Uh, we've been doing this since 1984. And never before have we been able to touch the community like we have this year. Uh, Master Williams was talking about how many pounds of food. Uh, the total on the amount of food that we've gave away so far this year is over a million dollars. Before the wow. end of the year, we will have given away two million dollars worth of food into our community. There's no other organization in the country, martial arts organization, that's doing that. It's just been a, a phenomenal year. Everybody knows John was talking about the Triple Crown trophies and the rings. Uh, we give away $40,000 worth of awards and prizes at the end of the year, and we don't charge our competitors extra for that. Again, that's a, that's a first. If you go to another organization and you're competing, you've got to pay for your hoodies or pay for your rings. The MMASC, through sponsorship and promoters like Master John Williams, makes it to where every child gets taken care of without it having to be just about the money. And this year, and, and uh, he and I was talking earlier this morning, this year, uh, this year, uh, the hottest thing out I was telling him is that PlayStation 5, and I know that we have thousands of listeners to this show. And a lot of people always say, well, uh, John, how can I help? How can I donate? How can I do this? I'm going to tell you what we need this year. We want to take it up even a step higher because every year when we go to the, um, when we go down and we do our, our annual banquet, we're always trying to look for ways to take it up a notch. If we had two people out there, two people out there, and, 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 and we know it can happen. We know it can happen if we had two people out there that one would donate a PlayStation 5 and the other one that would donate the new Xbox. I, I don't I don't see an Xbox 360. I don't know if it's an Xbox 360 or what is it now, 
But if we had two people that would donate one of those each, I don't care if you're an organization, if you get together as a school or whatever, and you donate those two items, that would just be, wow, that would just be awesome. If you donate those two items, we want to raffle those off at the, well, raffling me give away at the at the event that would be great to give those two away at the uh event in february because every february we make our way down that icy cold cold road to get to missouri from colorado we never know what the weather is going to be but i believe we've made every one for the last six or seven years but it, it it's always you just toss a coin up in the air because you don't know if it's going to take you 12 hours or 19 hours or 21 hours to get there. But when we get there, it's always good. Now, how many competitions, sir, do we have a, a, a year? Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to let people know that's looking for competitions, that's looking for good competitors. And, and let me clear something up. Everybody said, well, you know, the, People, not everybody, people say, well, you know, they okay in the MMASC, but, you know, but let me tell you, those guys, some of them are retired, but they are champions in the, in the MMA, I mean, the MAA ring, I mean, the uh, uh, MMA ring, and, and, and you got movie stars and everything else that's, that's come through the MMASC, so I'll let you explain about that, uh, some of the, some of the talent that has come in there. Man, we've had so many uh, full contact fighters, uh, tie fighters, kickboxing champions, and like he said, Bridget Baby Doll Riley uh, just did Bad Boys Three, uh, was in Million Dollar Baby. Uh, she's filming on set somewhere. She, it's she's not told us what it is that she's working on right now, but she cut her teeth right here. She lived in St. Louis, Missouri. Her and her brother Pat, and uh, now she's in Hollywood making it happen. There's so many success stories. Some of the greatest world champions in sport karate have come to Springfield, Missouri and came to the MMASC and competed down here. It is a smaller circuit compared to NASCAR and some of the world circuits. But the last year we went to Battle of Atlanta and Diamond Nationals, we brought home 100 world titles. No other team in the country has ever done that. So... Mm -hmm. The competition is top level here. We don't have the thousand dollar competitors or thousand competitors that the bigger tournaments have, but we get in, we get out. We start at eight o'clock in the morning. We're out at two o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, man, the competition is real here. And like you said, there's a lot of success stories of MMASC competitors going on and taking it to the next level. Yes, and, and I think J.J., uh, uh, J.J., wasn't he some kind of champion? Which one was a champion at, like, age 16 and just went through people <laughs> for a while? Jimmy Johnson, uh, Jimmy Superfoot Johnson, Danny Dynamite Miller, Jeff the Jet Cricker. I mean, these kids were kickboxing champions before they were teenagers. These guys all held belts, and they're still involved. Shad Cockrum is another one. You know, these are ninth degree black belts that, that started karate at 10, 11 years old, and they're still active and still doing it today. And, and uh, JJ fought on a lot of ESPN shows. Uh, he was an outstanding fighter. Well, uh, because, you know, every year we say, well, this is it. I'm retired this year. I'm retired this year. But, but once you get in that building, oh, I might as well go ahead and put my gear on. I mean, it's something about being in the building and watching the competition, you, you, you just can't sit back. You, you can't sit back. But, you know, uh, you, you, I have the privilege of being one of your promoters as well as I always say uh, one of your ambassadors here over in the state of Colorado. And uh, one thing that we are trying to do over here is I, I, I got with the police department yesterday, and we want to uh, – do a program together. It's going to be called Unity in the Community because you know the it's no secret with the uh, the police brutalities and the black crimes and the white crimes and the beatings and all that. 
And when a police pull up behind you, you don't know what to do and you're scared, you're gonna get shot, might not go home. And what we're doing with this program, I've talked with Chief Her uh, Herbert here and uh, Hubert here and um, a couple of the lieutenants and captains on the force here, we're gonna to get together and they have an actual program that they're already doing with the high school students here uh, is they will pull them over and teach them how to react when you get pulled over by the police. You know, how to have the information that they're asking for and all that stuff and uh, trying to ease that tension because even you know, and I, I always share this story, how I've come to Missouri or, or uh, Rogersville and some of the white competitors refuse to come in the ring because there's black people in there. I mean, the stupid stuff and people say, oh, that couldn't happen. What year was that? Like this was a couple of years ago. This was now, this is not anything new. But I'm here to tell you, everyone that's listening, this man that you see right here sitting in that car truck or SUV or whatever he's sitting in drinking the coffee, smiling, he refused the money because he said, let him go. Now, if you're letting 50 people go at $40 and not including the extra you get for the uh, spectators or whatever, he said, I'd rather have my fighters than to have some trash like that come in and refuse to be in a ring or in the room with black people. We already know that it's not many blacks in the MMASC, but I'm comfortable there. I, I, I'm black and I, I'm comfortable there. And that's what I try to tell people. You are, you, you run the room, you make the situation. If you go in there like I'm black or I'm white and I'm, I'm going to stand out. Yeah, you might have some trouble. But if you're going there and just be yourself, people are going to like you or they're going to hate you. It's the way you handle the situation. But one thing I love about MMASC is, is the competition, the friendship. We take care of each other. So me and you have been to, where haven't we been <laughs> receiving awards this last two years? Oh, man. Where else did we go to? Uh, South Carolina. Went to South Carolina, went to Houston, Texas, and then uh, being out there in Las Vegas with Michael J. White and, and you and I picking up the Living Legends ring, that, that was a big deal. And, and you're right. I'm glad you touched on that. We don't care if you're black, white, purple, orange, or green. It don't matter. If you want to fight, you know, we've had people from South Side of Chicago that, that really wasn't used to going to white circuits and came down there and they got treated like kings and queens. And whenever I went up there, they wouldn't let me stay in the motel up there. They wanted our kids to stay in the karate school and they fed us. Uh, the MMASC is not about color. I'm glad you brought that up. I know it's not politically correct. Everybody wants to tiptoe around the situation. We don't care what color you are. You come and compete. And uh, if you beat us, you beat us. If we beat you, we beat you. We go out and have some chicken when it's over with. That's it. And I and and you know, people say, well, you know, the 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 circuit is it's it's it you you well when you go in and, and, and we train you to use your basics, that's that's what you do because uh who else gets in a magazine every year and you can you can see if you say, Well, I was a bad fighter back in my day. Well, let me go check. Well, you got any record of it? Here we can pull out our magazine and say, Yeah, see. Three years ago, I was number one in that area, that area over there. And that, but how many people can say that? How many people can can uh, waltz around with that nice ring that we get every year? I got a whole collection of them over there. I, I, I flaunt them whenever I'm in my pictures or doing photo shoots. I'm always having my rings on. So tell us a little bit about, about that part. How, how do we see people looking at these Triple Crown trophies and 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 the uh, uh, points champions and all. Well, that's how did how did we get there? How did you come up with this with this right here? In in 1984, we wanted to do something different. We went down to Grandmaster Ken Eubanks tournament in Bluegrass Nationals in Louisville, Kentucky, and went to the first banquet down there. Triple Crown trophies down there. They had tr uh, rings down there. They had hoodies down there. They had oversized plaques. 
Uh, the MMASC is about rewarding their competitors without extra cost. And then, like you say, I've heard for years about so-and-so won this or won that or they were number one. I've got 100 magazines at the school, the old official karate, Black Belt Magazine, Karate Kung Fu Illustrated. And, and that's where your champions were at. It's like looking at the WBC or the WBA in boxing or kickboxing. And the MMASC is the same way. We have a national karate magazine. We don't charge for that magazine. And our top 10 competitors are in there. And at the year end, we have a yearbook. And uh, that's a big deal. To make it in that yearbook, you have justification of, hey, this is where I competed at. And here's where I wound up at. There's a lot of people out there that claim this or that, but then there's no record of it. We make sure that we have updated ratings. We have that magazine that we put out three times a year. Uh, We try and make sure everything is documented. That way, whenever you're saying, hey, I'm an MMASC Triple Crown champion, you can open up a magazine like you say and say, here it is. It's in national publication. And that's 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 what it's all about. It's about having yourself on record i was talking to grandmaster jesse my brother and he in everybody that know him know he was a fierce competitor back in his day but now he's up in age and you know battling cancer and 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 uh dementia and a few other things that he battles feet swells up back in the day (laughs) are you kidding me he was on fire last weekend they wound up the the radio station down there come and got him off the floor and and talked to him and did two live interviews with him what do you mean in the day <laughs> see he got this new thing that scares the mess out of everybody if you don't understand if you don't know he's got to do it after he do his cars or whatever he just flop over on the floor like he died and i told him you need to stop doing that because he always said, well, little brother, you know, I'm going to die in the ring. I said, well, don't die at my tournament. <laughs> you, you choose another one. But it's funny because it's people like that. And, and um, who is the other gentleman, Grandmaster? He's, uh, I, I know who I'm talking about. He's, he's about Jesse's age, or he is the oldest, I believe, competitor. Grandmaster Jim Moore, he's 84 years old. 84 years old and he's still doing his katas and weapons and and see you can't find i just don't think you can find that anywhere else i i just don't think you can find those type competitors anywhere else and you know if you let jesse he, grandmaster jesse he probably still try to get in there with the teenagers and 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 fight if you let him but oh yeah he ain't scared you have to you have to sometimes reel me and tell them, you know yeah you you feel good it, it's time to just just take it a little bit easier but um what are some of the other things that you're doing because I, I from what I understand the school is allowing you to come in now and do some things in the school I'm, I'm trying to yeah. promote this, what we're doing in the community as well as in the rain I sat down with uh, with a principal yesterday uh, I've got some I've got a couple of bids in for some vans. We're very fortunate. Uh, I'm an old knucklehead. I'm an unconvicted felon. And uh, four years ago, Springfield Public Schools reached out and gave me a Lifetime Achievement Award for working in my community. And and they said the door was open to run these after-school programs. So now we're in the process of buying more vans. I, like I said, I sat down with a principal yesterday. We're doing a couple of demonstrations coming up here in two weeks. And uh, we want to go out and reach those kids that most people run from. My pastor says that all the time, that we're reaching out for the people that most people run from. We want those kids that are having a hard time in school, that don't have the funds, that don't have the transportation, and go get those kids and put them in a positive environment. Yes, yes. And that's that's the thing that I was, uh, one thing I'm going to address when I have the, I'm actually going to have a police chief and the police sergeant on the show and another another outlet, sir, is I've been I made the announcement the other night. We've been blessed. Uh, we have our own TV show now. And, you know, anything that I do, I always include MMASC because that is my other family. Uh, we were blessed to get our own TV show. It's going to be Elite TV. And we want to put it out there for people to uh, watch because it's 
300 and I mean 236 million uh, viewers plus eight different countries. So we we are everywhere. We're going to be everywhere, and that's not only that. We also picked up South America, where there's 60 million. Uh, excuse me, 60 thousand uh, uh, subscribers already. So we are when we launch it in November, it's it's gonna it's gonna take us, and that's why I text you the other day, and I asked him. I said, "How far do you want MMASC to go?" I couldn't tell you what I had, what God had blessed us with right then, but that is the reason you was in a revival, <laughs> and I don't know what your preacher was talking about. But you just didn't know you was being blessed while you was in the revival because God approved it. He approved it while you was in the uh, revival. And the, and the reason I asked that question, because when you come on the show now, well, you know, starting in the middle of the month when we start filming, we're going to get on here and do this again. Uh, you're going to be MMA ASC will be in over 236 million homes. And over eight different countries to include uh, sixty thousand over in South America. Well, and, you and I uh, talked about what the next level of the MMASC is. You helping out on the international side. Down here, my next big step is to give away a hundred thousand dollars in college scholarship money. I've got a young man sitting back here with me right now. He's one of the youngest MMASC kings of the Midwest. Look up, Eric. That's Mr. Eric Hefner, one of the youngest He's kings in the Midwest. And we want, we want to be able to give away college scholarship money to these kids. You know, we didn't do that in the days. It would be awesome to be able to have these kids. They have thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 in the bank on college scholarship money through the martial arts. And with you putting this out there to 3.8 million people, somebody out there can stroke a check for that. And make yeah. sure that that money goes to those kids. We're going to put that money in a trust fund. And every year we'd like to give away $5,000 to the top 10 boys and top 10 girls. And I, my preacher told me the other day, my God's a big God. You got to pray big. If you want big, you got to pray big. And like you said, as soon as I was in that revival, you just told me that you went worldwide. Somebody out there is going to see the value in what we're doing here. And, and I, we're going to give away $100,000 in college scholarships. Nobody in the country, martial arts-wise, is doing that. And see, that's exactly what I was saying. You have to think big. You have to, I, when I started this show, when I started, when I started this show, I was only on, like, Facebook Live. And then somebody saw me on Facebook Live and said, hey, uh, you know, we got a TV show over here. And, and won't you come over here? So we went over there. And then we got on yard stream, uh, stream yard, and then it just blew up from there. Somebody else saw us and hey, I signed you up for this over here. And then we was over there, and who haven't we met since we <laughs> since we've been on? I'm 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 in the works of doing some stuff with the former champion, uh, Mister Mister Hennington over in Canada, uh, Daryl. Yeah. Uh, yes, over in Canada, and he wants to do some things with us. I talked to Grandmaster Jesse Bowens over in uh, uh, North Carolina. He wants to connect with MMASC because he believe you got. He believe in you. You met him in in, in Vegas, and uh, then we got Grandmaster Carlos out of Port out of uh, Brazil that uh, is is setting me up with some things over there. They actually, I'll, I'll make the announcement now. <laughs> I, I was just informed last night. They want to make me a night, a uh, lifetime night over in uh, Brazil. And not only that, it comes with going and sit down, having dinner with the, with the, with the family, the Gracie's family. So one day while I'm in Brazil, when the pandemic raised up, uh, I'll be having dinner with the whole Gracie's family. I've been invited to their home, not just to the, but to their home. I'm and glad you brought up about family. It, that's another thing. The MMASC is all about family. And not only do we preach it, look here. That's my brother. <laughs> that, 
that was the dude that raised me up and made me the man I am today. He was my corner man uh, in my full contact fights. And, you know, family. You, you brought up the Gracie's family. The Osborne family is synonymous with being in the martial arts and being a powerhouse in the Midwest. And the MMASC family sticks together like gold. I mean, I'm glad you brought up family because I think sometimes these other circuits, that's what they miss. They miss the family value. You can go compete for a tournament. We had two black belts that are masters, almost grandmasters, that when the tournament was over with in Mount Home, they said, listen, we've been competing all around down south. Every time we leave your place, it's like leaving a family reunion. And you've said the same thing. You hated to go back to Colorado because you yeah. you wanted the good times to last. We're yes. about family. I'm glad you brought that up. Yes, I uh, and and like I say, it's not a it's not a it, that's because we're not selfish. When we were in Vegas, we sit down to eat, and and people that wasn't in Vegas with us just don't know it was hectic. Sometimes the the hotel was getting on your nerves and. The food was just too expensive. I mean, it wasn't that good at times, and you wasted a lot of money. People say, well, when you go to Vegas, you gamble and lose. No, I think you lose more money by sampling the food that they give you because it's so expensive. But but in Vegas, how we just took care of each other, and, and, and even though, listen, even though we were in Vegas, and Michael J. White was there, Michael J. White was there, and and uh, Baldwin, uh, uh, they were there and had a lot of big wigs, but people knew who MMASC was. They knew who uh, uh, Grandmaster Richard Osborne was. They who they knew who Master Williams was. And we were in Vegas, y'all, with these big movie stars that supposedly have been on bigger, bigger stages than we have. But it's the way we carried ourselves. We we. We may have been the small fish in the big pond, but look, they treated us as if we were sharks, uh, not sharks, but the big dolphin or the big whale, just like they were. Nobody disrespected us. They didn't say, oh, your circuit is weak. I believe you gave, even when we went to Texas, you uh, some of the some of the big wigs was getting the magazines and rings from you. They was asking to be for your magazine in, in Texas. And we talking people that... That's the who uh some of the people that was really big that owns the uh, uh battle of Atlanta and all that. We hung out with these guys and they was asking for, hey, let me check your ring out and let me do you got another magazine? You were signing magazines for, for AJ Perry and, and 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 all these guys over in in Texas. Yeah, when Grandmaster we were, Joe Corley and, and yeah, Joe uh, Moore, Jeff yeah. Smith and and all those guys, they recognize, they recognize that, that uh, I've been in this 45 years and I've tried to make an impact and a difference. And man, I should have probably retired years ago, but God had another plan for me. That's why he put you and I in South Carolina together and put us in Texas. And then God made sure, they no way me and you should have went to Las Vegas, but we found a way and uh, we went out there and, and those, and that's what it's all about. You know, having your peers, having those guys that's got 60 years in the martial arts, mm -hmm. take a look at the MMASC and see the positive things we're doing. You're always going to have somebody that throws mud at you. Yeah. Anybody can get on Facebook and say this or that. or You know, you're black. You shouldn't be hanging out with him. You're white. You shouldn't be hanging out with him. The MMASC, yeah, they give away $2 million worth of food. But, you know, they like to go out and eat chicken together. And we don't like that. Well, if you're doing something right, there's always going to be somebody trying to throw some mud. And having those pioneers, having those guys see the MMASC and meeting you and I, and like you said, signing those magazines, we put, we took 100 magazines down there and gave them all out. Uh, you good. signed more than I did. But <laughs> it, it's good. It, it It's good that our kids see that you and I are out working in the community. And it's good that our students know that they're going to be working in the community and, and they're going to be the next generation one of these days. And I was shocked. We went down to, we went down to Oklahoma and it was so many new people, so many new students that came into the MMASC and they were like, who are you? Who are you? Who is this? 
I'm like, wait a minute, how do you not know who I am? So it was it was funny to see how much the MMAC ASC had grown even when I came to my own tournament. Because so I do the uh, tournament in what was it, August, uh, August, September, when we had a Williams uh, Elite tournament down uh, in in uh, Springfield. A lot of people of the new people didn't know who I was, but it didn't take them long because uh, I, 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 you will know who I am because I'm going to be crazy. I'm going to act like I own the place. I just feel at home when I come to Springfield. Me and the wife, we were trying to, I thought I had a convince to move back that way. And I'm just kicking myself because we lived in uh, Fort Linwood for three years. And then the fourth year, after we moved here is when I found out about the MMASC. Well, I, I, I lost three years of not even being with you there because I could have been with you for, I was just in Springfield. I was in, uh, I was in uh, Fort Leonard Wood, Wood in Waynesville years and didn't even know who you were. And I came to Springfield once a month because I was the potentate for the Shriners and you know, I was, we did a lot of missions work. Uh, we did a lot of work uh, with the lodges because when the hurricane hit, I was the designated one of getting the food from Fort Leonard Wood to, um, where did that hurt? Where, where's on the other side of Springfield where the hurricane, I mean, the tornado. Joplin. Joplin. I physically drove the food and clothes and stuff from Springfield, I mean, from Fort Leonard Wood to Joplin, I made that trip about three times. So this is just something I wanted to bring you on this morning. I'm not going to hold you long because I got another couple of interviews I got to do. But this is something, you guys, that we I wanted to personally bring Spring Grandmaster Richard Osborne on because you have highs and lows. And right now, I think MMASC is in that high season where everybody is talking about it. Every time I look on the uh, Internet. And you see people asking for a martial arts school. The students are doing like they do because, like I tell people, if you got a good girlfriend, you brag on it. If you got a good boyfriend, you brag on it. And right now, a lot of people find that the MMASC is a good girlfriend or boyfriend for them, and they bragging on it. You uh, Listen, take it from me. I've been there for seven years. You're going to have ups and downs. Anybody that's listening, Every day in the MMASC is not Sunday. That man that you're looking at right there, he gonna tell you like a TIS and, and <laughs> like we say, he gonna tell you like a TI is, whether you like it or not, you get mad at him, you'll get happy with him, but just know he's gonna always have your back. People gonna talk about you. Uh, don't join those uh, conversations because anywhere you go, you're gonna find something that's not done the way that you think it should be, but he always have a method behind his madness. And with me saying that, that little guy in your back seat that's sitting back there that you pan that camera to, yeah, him back there with that, yeah, you, you, you. This is what I want you to do. I want you to get out of that car and go to the airport and come on to Colorado and you can you can you can be with us and we'll take you back to Springfield every now. Oh then. no, you ain't getting him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, my battery's running down on my phone. Thank you for having me on today. Yes, God bless sir. each and every one of you. I'll see you soon. Thank you, sir. Y'all be blessed.